this tutorial, let's take a look at the new adjacent constraints option in the RBD Lab 1.5.2 Metalsoft add-on. Let's take this simple scene where these three are different meshes and some parts of the mesh are touching where some parts of the mesh are away from each other. So let's see how we can create edges and constraints between such meshes. First, let's select all the meshes and let's add a standard scatter. Looks good. Apply fracture and physics, add ground. And let's move the ground in the Z direction a little bit. Actually, let's use the add-on to hide it. There you go. And, and under RBD settings, let's add rigid bodies to the target collections. Looks good. Now let's head to the constraints module and let's select all the source collections because we would like to create a distance between the target collections. Now with the source filter as collections, and the type as fixed and breakable unchecked. And let's check on iterations and let's keep the number at 100. And with the adjacent selected, we'll take a look at the automatic and the bounding box options in this tutorial. Now first, let's get to the automatic option. And here, there's a restriction toggle and I'll talk about it in just a moment. Now with the restriction on, let's select the adjacents. So these are the adjacent uh, chunks that were selected. Now let's create an adjacent constraint group with the restriction on. There we go. This is how the constraints look like. Now with the restriction off, let's select the adjacents. Now what this does is it will also create constraints between the chunks of the same target collection as well. Now let's create adjacent constraint group. And when we take a look at it, so with the restriction toggle on in the previous case, there are no constraints between the chunks of the same target collection. Nothing here, nothing here. Only between the chunks of different target collections. Now, when the restriction toggle is off, it will generate constraints between the chunks of different target collections and also among the chunks of the same target collection as well. So that's the difference. All right. Now that's with the automatic. Now there's one more option to expand the selection of the chunks for the constraints. So what do I mean by that is when the restriction is off and we select the adjacents, if we press the plus button, it will expand the selection. For the constraints. So now when we create adjacent constraint group, Here's how it creates the adjacents. So that's the use of the plus option. All right, sounds good. Now, when we observe, let's bring back the restriction on. Now, when we observe with the automatic option, with this neighbor's threshold distance, we have the selection only in this part where the chunks are in contact with the other target collection. But let's say we would like to have the constraints created between these chunks as well. Now what do we do? Now we can click on the bounding box option and with an offset of zero, let's select the adjacents. There we go. The selection has been expanded to include the chunks which are not touching as well here. So now let's say we would like to expand this to include these chunks as well. Then we can increase the offset. Let's say to 
Uh, let's say to 0 0.1. Good, more added. Let's increase this to 0 0.5. And there we go. So now we have all the chunks at the edges selected as well, right here. Now this chunk is not selected, if you notice. So let's increase this to 0 0.6 and select adjacent. Let's take a look. Uh, one chunk is still there. So let's say 0 0.7. And there we go. Looks good now. So these are the chunks that are selected for the adjacent calculation, which is what we wanted. That even though there's a gap between these two, the add-on should consider them as neighbors while calculating the adjacents. Perfect. So let's create adjacent constraint group. There we go. So this is with the automatic option. And this is with the bounding box option. Perfect. Now let's see how this translates to the simulation. Now in order to see how the simulation uh, changes, let's take a look at the difference between the first and the last option. Let's click on update. And let's bake for faster simulation playback. There you go. We can see these are still intact. Now let's take a look at the bounding box option. And let's update and let's bake. Let's play the simulation. There you go. So most of it is intact, right here, right here. So that's how we have more control over the simulation by using the bounding box option. Cool. Now, how does this translate to a useful scenario? Now, let's say we have something like a car model where we're trying to run a metal soft simulation. Now here we have the door and the fender. Now let's say we would like to create constraints between the chunks of the door to the chunks of the fender. Then here, in most of the car models, we have a little bit of a gap between the door and the fender. So the normal automatic threshold option is not going to be sufficient to create the constraints. Let's take a look. Let's get to the adjacents and with the restriction on, let's select the adjacents. So as we can see, at this neighbor's threshold, only these two chunks are selected as neighbors. Now, when we create a constraint group, the constraint group will consist of only these two chunks, like this. There you go. So that's not what we want. So what we are interested in is to create the constraints between the edge of the door to the edge of the fender. So let's choose the bounding box option. And with the default value at a very low value of 0 0.0001, let's select the adjacents. There you go. So now we have all the adjacents selected between the chunks of the door and the fender. Now let's create adjacent constraint group. There we go. Now in addition to this, let's create the constraint group for the fender and the door as well. Let's uncheck the adjacent option and 
create constraint group. There we go. Now let's select the other target collection and create constraint group. There we go. Looks good. Let's delete the first group that we created. And let's have the iterations on for stronger constraint calculations. There you go. So this is how we can use the new adjacent constraints and the bounding box offset options. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you and stay tuned for more tutorials.